I'm going to introduce our first speaker. And I'm very pleased to actually be um, bringing the, um, very pleased to introduce uh, Kendrick Lee from the Singapore Government Technology Agency, or GovTech. Um, Kendrick, I'm, I'm very impressed. We, we've had a speaker from uh, GovTech on the very first API Days uh, Singapore, who, who in 2019, he spoke about the MyInfo service. Last year, you and, and Eric spoke about the, the additional things that you've been able to do with, with MyInfo and, and what's coming down the track, um, how um, the digital identity has uh, contributed to uh, safe entry and other initiatives. But even in the last few months, I think you just keep um, adding new ways to leverage this this national digital identity, not just for delivery of government services, but to help us uh, accelerate business in in Singapore. So um, I'm I'm very keen to to learn more about uh, what what you you guys are doing. Um, very very welcome. All right, thank okay. you, John. Okay, I will I will get off the screen now. All right, thank you, John, for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Kendrick from GovTech. I look after the go-to-market uh, for SingPass, our national digital identity program uh, in Singapore. All right, so thank you for inviting me to API Days 2021. I'm honored to be back among fellow API practitioners. Um, as John has said, and some of you might know, we refreshed SingPass in March this year right, to reflect improved services and co-innovation with the private sector. In the next 20 minutes or so, I will be sharing with you how relying partners and API developers like yourselves can be part of this even better SingPass to deliver an easier connected life for our customers. The concept of digital identity is not new. Many countries have implemented or are starting to implement their national digital identity with varying degrees of success. But the common theme is that governments and private sector businesses are increasingly recognizing that digital identity is the core foundation of a digital economy. However, many countries focus their digital identity program on the issuance of a digital credential to the citizens either in the form of a smart card, mobile app, or crypto-based identity. In Singapore, we believe it, it is more than that. In addition to issuing Singaporeans and residents with a mobile and crypto-based digital identity in the form of the SingPass app, we have three objectives. First, to digitally empower our citizens by providing a convenient and secure means to transact digitally with more confidence with both public or private sector services. Second, which may not be so obvious, is to digitally enable businesses by providing a series of trust services so that businesses are able to digitalize the operations and capture the opportunities that comes with digitalization. Third, at a more macro level, is to create an ecosystem of trust so as to promote trusted data flows, which is essentially what digitalization is about. Singapore is an open and interconnected global city and over the years since our pioneering days, we have built world-class infrastructure for the movement of goods and people that has made Singapore a trade hub and people hub of the world. In the digital era, it is important for us to have trusted digital infrastructure that facil facilitate the movement of data, enabling trusted data flows across boundaries of systems, organizations, and borders. All these facilitated by the control and consent of individuals. For SingPass to be successful, we need to drive the adoption of both individual consumers as well as businesses so that there are useful digital services from both public and private sector relying on our platform and there's sufficient reach to the consumer side to make it worthwhile for these businesses. Right? So enough services for individuals to use, enough indig individuals for businesses to serve. Over the last three years, our focus has been on building these components of the digital infrastructure and plot platform. This includes six API products for businesses, as well as the SingPass app, which is the key product citizens will use to transact with government and private sector services with higher assurance 
and trust. We have also extended Singpass platform to support the ESG FinTech data ecosystem among banks, as well as to safe entry for COVID-19 contact tracing. Built upon the Singpass digital infrastructure, safe entry was rolled out within three weeks and, and enabled across 200,000 venues across the island with over 300 million transactions each month. We also partner businesses to co-create more innovative and value-added services. They can leverage the ready suite of Singpass APIs to help them enhance services and customer experience. I will share some case studies in my presentation. The number of businesses enabled by Singpass has quadrupled from just a year ago. As more business businesses come on board, we expect the number of services facilitated by Singpass to grow. So let's, let's take a look at some of these services and I hope that you will identify with the opportunities that our relying partners have seen. We launched Mindful in 2017, and to date, more than 600 digital services are using Mindful for customer onboarding. Whether it is for the more routine, you know, convenient customer registration, or the more serious EKYC in compliance with business reg regulations, businesses which leverage on Mindful offer instant, presenceless, and fully digital service, which improve customer satisfaction, increase customer conversion rates, drives up revenue and also help them with lower costs. So the citizens, they enjoy better customer service. What you see here is GetGo, a new time-based car sharing service that launched in Singapore last month. Car customers register and book a car through their app. As a digitally native service, they decided to incorporate Mindful into their customer sign-up process from the GetGo. All right, pun not interested. As you can see, customers get to drive off with their desired car immediately upon registration, and GetGo gets to collect their time-based fee sooner too. You don't have to wait 48 hours for manual verification. To illustrate this point further, this chart shows a research done by a US company built for Mars that sets out to discover how easy it is to open a bank account in the UK and whether there is indeed a difference between traditional and challenger banks. The Center for Finance, Technology and Entrepreneurship adapted it to add on the local banks and fintechs in Singapore. As you can see from the chart, the top five in this list have one thing in common. They all use Mindful. Of course, the number of clicks does not equate good user experience, but user experience cannot be good if you have to click 50 times or more. Another report, report reports that it takes two to 36 days to open the bank account in the UK. For banks in Singapore using Mindful, account opening can be instantaneous, right? And so are credit card and loan applications. Today, Mindful powers more than 600 digital services for more convenient customer registration or KYC in compliance with regulations. This range from GetGo, the car sharing service, which I spoke about earlier, to registering for tax deductible status when making donations to charities like Give Please. Signing up for Apple's Lumi Health Wellness Service to earn fitness gamification rewards, or participating in Singpo's Postpal Smart Locker Service. We have certainly grown beyond our financial services routes. We continue to receive more than 30 proposals per month for the use of Mindful APIs, and I look forward to powering your paperless, presenceless, and instant services with Mindful too. So keep those proposals coming. Digitalization can also happen in a physical setting. The way we look at it, instead of present citizens presenting their physical identity card to register themselves, enter a premise or qualify for a service, Verify allows the citizen to, one, scan a QR code or NFC tag using the SingPass app. Two, consent to share the list of designated personal data. And three, send across the verified data securely and directly to the relying partner. This means, this digital means of identity, of identity verification and consent-based data sharing is not only seamless, it helps to avoid fraudulent claims of identity and avoids the need for your ID card to be copied, collected, or retained by the service provider. If you visit a polyclinic for the first time to see a doctor, you can register using Verify for a more seamless, contactless, and digital service. Last year during the pandemic, ASCAN, a digital payments company, pivoted to offer contactless purchase of controlled products, in this case, alcohol, through vending machines by using Verify API 
to receive the date of birth of customers for age verification. Login with SingPass is not new to Singaporeans, but we, what we have done is to launch SingPass app as a passwordless and secure way to assess online services and extended this to private sector businesses. Businesses benefited as they can avoid the cost of operating their own authentication system, but more importantly, allow more than 2.7 million SingPass users to easily and immediately access their services without passwords. We extended login by SingPass to private sector in 2019. And to date, we have more than 60 relying services ranging from insurance companies, hospitals, and local SMEs, like those offering HR and finance software as a service. A real, a real estate company, in this case, Orange Tea and Thai, are also using login with SingPass for their property agents to assess employee services and simplify account management. For those of you who have not tried, you can now log in to your SGX central depository account using SingPass or your insurance portals to view your insurance policies. Most of the major insurers are already on board. I don't know about you, but for me, I can never remember my insurance portal passwords. So this is a godsend. We have also launched the new services such as face verification as a service and digital signing in 2020. These are some of the things that uh, John had spoken about. These are still in pilot phases, but we have obtained strong indication of interest from government agencies and businesses that these products will help them drive digitalization. Face verification is an authentication factor which everyone can use, including the elderly, the less digitally savvy, and those with dry fingerprints, like my dad. It can also be combined with other factors for more secure multi-factor authentication. Our pilot services include self-service kiosks at government agencies, DBS Bank for onboarding to the Digibank app, and OCBC Bank for checking of account balances at ATMs, as well as Just Login, a local HR and finance SaaS provider for assessing their platform. For digital signing, we have partnered with eight leading global and local document management products, such as Adobe, DocuSign, OneSpan, Didoco, Tesseract IO, iTex, uh, NetTrust, to enable SingPass digital signing on these commercial products. Depending on your business model, you have the option of using or integrating with these services uh, of these digital signing partners or integrating directly with our Sign with SingPass API. Beside the Singapore Land Transport Authority, besides the Singapore Land Authority, who is piloting the use of Sign with SingPass for signing caveats e lodge to them, property firm ERA has also rolled out digital signing of tenancy agreements with SingPass to benefit property owners who are based overseas and to help agents minimize physical contact when servicing customers, especially in the current circumstances. To the citizens and residents, the main product that they will use is SingPass app. We launched SingPass app in October 2018, and since then, we've adopted an agile approach in releasing new features and improve, improvements progressively. We are encouraged by the user adoption, which to date has just exceeded 2.7 million users. A more important indicator is our monthly act active users, which has also exceeded 2.4 million, indicating that over 90% of users use SingPass app at least once a month and over 80% of users use it at least once every week. This is an important indicator as it shows the relevance of SingPass app to everyone's life. To top it up, our app rating in Google Play and App Store is at 4.7, and this is a number we look at closely to make sure that users are continuously satisfied with the product. SingPass can now be used to access more services with both the government and private se sector, be it viewing your CPF balance, assessing bank account, uh, buying a property or even making a donation. To date, residents can access more than 1,400 services using SingPass with over 200 million transactions conducted each year. By now, I hope you are as excited hearing about the even better SingPass as I have been sharing the latest updates about APIs with you. And you are eager to know where you can sign on the dotted line. If you haven't already visited our SingPass API portal, please scan this QR code to get there. The documentation for all the API products I shared so far are publicly published here. You don't need an account to view it. To submit a link up request or onboard with us, please log in with SingPass after you have been given the appropriate authorization 
by your business's CodePass admin. This is also where you access the SyncPass API sandbox and manage your API configurations such as API keys, callback URLs, and exchange public certificates. Through this portal, some of relying parties have been able to complete integration and launch new services in just days. This is the new time to be. Now, please let me end with two slides, right? About how we are harnessing APIs by combining them with digital identity to solve harder problems. For many organizations that publish secure APIs for business transactions, users and users like you and human beings, right? Need business application systems to access them. For government filings, the identity of the filer is important and needs to be captured accurately, something which the API key or application ID alone may not be sufficient. IRAS and ECRA are two agencies that have published various APIs for finance and payroll software to in integrate with them to digitalize transactions end-to-end. -end. By using Authorize with SyncPass based on OAuth 2, users of this software can file directly from the software they are using by authenticating and authorizing the software in line while calling the agency's protected resource APIs on their behalf. This improves productivity and the overall customer journey as users previously had to export the data, export to a file, right? log into a separate system, upload it, right? and if there's an error, toggle between the two systems when they run into problems. Right? So, cl so clearly, this is a huge increase in productivity and more can get done. So far, we have talked about government as a platform to connect businesses with individuals. But what if we can connect an entire industry or entire industries as well? One such initiative is SG Findex or the Singapore Financial Data Exchange, which is Singapore's interpretation of open banking and which is also the world's first public digital infrastructure that allows a person to sign in using his SingPass national digital identity and provide consent via OAuth 2 to obtain his financial information from different institutions and government agencies for financial planning. Right, so if you look at the screen, in the center you can see, uh, if I bank accounts with uh, more than one bank, I can put it all together in one screen, right, and the consuming service can use the information for financial planning. The CPF board, our pension fund, and the seven uh, major banks in Singapore are already on board with the central depository, uh, SGX CDP joining this year, and the major life insurance following soon. By aligning policymakers, business leaders, and digital technologies around a common trusted identity and consent framework, we're able to harness APIs to move data secure, securely across the boundaries of organizations with the consent of the data subjects to create new possibilities in the digital economy. Our Deputy Prime Minister, uh, DPM Heng, pointed this out in his speech launching SG Index at the Singapore FinTech Festival last year, where he highlighted that this approach can potentially be applied in other areas and in other jurisdictions. And we're working on some projects uh, along those lines. Uh, hopefully, I can share more about them at the next API days. But if you're interested to find out more about SG FinDEX and how we engineered it, right, please join my colleague Eric at 12.15 today on the industry track, and he will tell you more uh, about what's under the hood. Thank you once again for spending your time with me this morning. I look forward to learning from all of you as you share your API war stories and wish you fruitful API days. Thank you. Henrik, um, thanks, thanks very much for that uh, overview. I think um, <clears throat> it's very uh, visionary how, uh, how GovTech has taken what, <clears throat> what most people would think of as, okay, let's figure out how to uh, pre present a whole of government service to, to citizens and residents, and you've taken it so much further 
into the different ways that um, we can accelerate business. I'm just looking um, for uh, questions in the chat, but um, <clears throat> there is a, we, we do have a question about how, uh, how information is, is protected. And I, I think this is very relevant given that we're talking about um, very sensitive uh, personal information that's being shared with corporate entities and uh, and there is obviously a consent mechanism through through the sing pass but can you talk a little bit about how um, how, how you're protecting uh, the, the the information of, of citizens and, and residents sure so so maybe let me start with some principles uh, because it's not always just about technology alone all right, so I think let's begin by saying that uh, this information, this personal information, is actually personal information uh, that uh, exists today in documents that the citizen holds. All right, and and in many, in many cases these are government issued documents, right? And this and this information is what uh, citizens already today uh, would share, uh, albeit in uh, physical form or you know in less uh, convenient uh, forms, right? Uh, to to go about their transactions. Right, so I think what we have, we have done is really put in place a mechanism to identify the person who wants to do the sharing, to capture the consent, and, and ensure that the data uh, flows that way. Right, so we are ditching, ditching the paper and bringing it online and digitalizing an existing process, making it a lot more seamless. Right, so I think that, that, that's the first thing to bear in mind. Second thing to bear in mind is that uh, we adhere to the principles of our Personal Data Protection Act in Singapore. All right, so when we assess uh, requests, uh, proposals for the use of the service, we assess against those principles, all right, uh, including any regulatory requirement for such data right, uh, before we uh, onboard them uh, onto the APIs. All right, so, so I think uh, that's the, the, more, the, the, the more important construct. Mm. Right? And then yeah. there's a security. Uh, you know, then we uh, rely uh, on the usual standards, right, including uh, third-party uh, independent audits, as well as the bug bounty program, where we invite people to find flaws, right, and then reward them accordingly. Yeah. Um, so I guess that gets back to sharing of any information and the way you uh, you actually agree to to grant access to uh, the, uh, the the my info the, the the APIs that you have, uh, not just uh, my info. So the, the other agencies that you deal with. So, uh, you know, banks and insurance companies are already um, highly regulated uh, in terms of how they, how they manage information. Um, you know, MAS is, is really quite, quite strong in that. But you're looking even broader than financial services now uh, to, to sharing information with other companies. What are, what are the sort of steps that uh, the companies have to go through if they want to join um, the, uh, the the SingPass program and uh, and gain uh, access or streamline their customer onboarding and, and other processes um, in, as part of your program. All right. So earlier I shared uh, the link to our SingPass API portal. Right. So firstly, to come on board, you have to be a locally registered business. Right. So that's accountability. Uh, log in with your uh, sync pass uh, with COPPAS authorization, right? So we know that you are a live entity and a real person, right? Uh, you have to accept the terms of agreement, uh, which uh, includes certain responsibilities that are already spelled out in our Personal Data Protection Act. So that's a, in a way a legal uh, requirement, right? And of course, uh, you might be able to perform the technical integration, right? So, so, uh, so what we do in terms of technical is that we layer relevant security uh, on top of the industry standards. So, for example, in Mindful, you will notice that uh, there is PKI digital signature layered on top of OAuth 2. That's many man in the middle attacks. Right? So, uh, you, have, you need to have some proficiency uh, with, with APIs. This is what this conference is about. Uh, but if you aren't proficient with APIs, then there are third-party platforms and third-party service providers who are familiar with integrating uh, with the SyncPass APIs who can also help you. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's, that's a, a good point because perhaps not uh, companies are rapidly digitizing, but they're not necessarily always familiar with the, the, uh, the, the steps for the, for the technical integration with, uh, with a, a new API. Okay, and I, I just saw a comment in the, 
in the chat there uh, you've gone from know your customer to know your citizen and i think that's really what you're in the business of uh, of doing so you're redefining what what kyc means okay, okay. Um, interesting comment yeah yeah okay well thanks thanks very much uh kendrick i'm i'm very uh very pleased you're able to to share that and uh, i think we have we have a session later on uh this morning with uh with eric who's going to go in a little bit more detail about the sg findex and uh and of course we we have um uh speakers tomorrow particularly uh alan lim from from mas who will talk about the uh the digital infrastructure for finance um but uh you know, this is all um uh, the the sing pass um digital identity is is really underpinning a lot of uh, a lot of that so uh